Welcome back everybody, it's Paul Maglo here with Train Valley 2! Our next trip takes us to China's Guizhou province, where we build the 500 meter aperture spherical telescope, or FAST, the world's largest filled aperture radio telescope. Now I can't predict what you are thinking, but can you predict what I'm thinking? If you guessed gotta go fast, then you would be correct and also familiar with dead internet memes. This level throws some unique challenges toward players, whose solutions remained unclear to me until further research was done. Those challenges include overcoming the geographical bottlenecks to divide the map into two sections, generating continuous power, and figuring out the safest way to hook up the twin tunnels. Spoiler alert, one method is safe and the other causes collisions. If that wasn't enough, the way electricity is transferred between the divided map sections requires learning a new trick. And the location of the bottlenecks mentioned earlier means the shortest distance between two stations is almost never a straight line. Another confusing factor was the placement of the mission objectives, because I was initially not sure which stations the steel plates and microchips were supposed to go. For clarification purposes, the steel plates go here, and the microchips go here. In general, the order that certain tracks are laid out in the video may not be the most time efficient, so your results may vary. I usually start setting up a rail network connecting the power station, town, steel port, and steel mill together to produce steel plates in the top left corner of the map. This is followed by a small rail network connecting the shipyards importing engineers and copper, the town at the bottom, the town placed in the top right corner, and the sand quarry. After the copper is sent to the town placed in the top right corner, I plan ahead by connecting more extraneous tracks together, so electrical wiring from the map's left rail network transfers power to the rail network on the right. This can only be done by crossing perpendicular tracks together, which visually doesn't make sense due to the floating perpendicular catenary wires, but makes sense from the perspective of the game's coded logic. Eventually, connections to the fulfillment warehouse, microchip factory, and wire factory are made. Once all the steel plates and chips are delivered, the radio telescope is complete, which declutters the surrounding valley, giving players room to connect both networks on the left and right side of the map together, along with the milling machine factory. From there, players can manufacture and deliver the remaining goods, such as extra copper wiring and milling machines. The majority of this map focuses on the timing behind certain goods and workers in a fashion and extent not seen in previous levels making the pursuit of 5 stars more than a worthy challenge for players. I just wish the level clarified what was expected of players without divulging the secrets of its civil engineering puzzles. Since you're here though, feel free to check the still image showing all the possible track connections in this level. With that out of the way, let's move on to some other topics I wanted to mention. In the previous episodes about the Orson Bridge and the Mountain of Garbage, I prefaced them half-jokingly with the canon that our industrial activities in previous levels amounted to an environmental disaster, which needed fixing and other issues. But after writing, editing, and publishing those episodes, it's pretty clear that my joke wasn't that funny and only applied to those levels. I say this since my joke failed to align with the main game's overarching narrative, which focuses on several more facets of humanity's global industrial history, sprinkled with a few whimsical levels in between. That is not to say the game ignores environmental issues, level 44, the mountain of garbage makes that evident since it was likely inspired by the actual mountains of garbage in India, like the one in Ghazipur, which have garnered notoriety for the local ecological problems they pose. I tried mentioning this detail about Ghazipur in some capacity in the video description for level 44, but I did not think that was enough clarification. Most people don't read the description anyway, and if some of my comments are any indication, some of my viewers aren't even old enough to read and write. I'm sorry for causing any potential confusion, that was just a gag for levels 43 and 44. I just wanted to get that off my chest for some reason. At least that mistake was not as consequential as that time I mixed up community confabulations with a Mandela effect. What other updates did I want to mention? Black Friday burnt an immense hole in my wallet. Since Black Friday deals and retail stores were spread out across November due to the pandemic, I decided to get some games that I wanted hard copies of because as I likely said before, digital copies of games from online stores lack permanence. Most of the games were physical copies of games I digitally own or have already played, but with more features my digital copies do not have. Other games I got were unique titles I did not play before, like Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I would have gotten more new games I never played before, but games like Animal Crossing did not tickle my fancy, 
and parting with any more money at this point is a bad idea. I'm not sure what to do since, at the time of recording, Cyber Monday is coming up, and my wallet is not ready to be beaten up again. Other games I wanted to eventually play or review, like Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy or the Spyro Reignited Trilogy from Activision Blizzard were on my mind, but I have held back on principle since I forgot whether the company peddled back on its punishment towards Hearthstone player Litzchung for voicing his support of pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong back in 2019, among other company controversies. Perhaps that sentiment might be a moot point considering further research on the matter suggested the company lowered its punishment by allowing Blitz Chung to keep his prize earnings a few days after the punishment was given. Not only that, but Blitz Chung was granted the chance to play again competitively for certain 2020 competitions. But I cannot determine whether Blitz Chung confirmed that, since his social media presence in the English-speaking part of the internet is slim. But what would I know? I live under a rock. My final thoughts on physical game copies might be my concerns for the future of physical games in general. I looked up the subject the other day and was concerned they would be exclusively replaced with only digital copies in the near future. How near into the future I cannot say, because I never put much thought into the subject. Furthermore, I noticed speculation about the subject has circulated around for over half a decade, yet there are still physical copies of games on store shelves. The initial concern was that I would have to add external drives into future consoles to store all my games. A trivial concern since digital game purchases are cheaper for manufacturers and consumers. The main concern, however, was missing out on a game I wanted because online stores stopped selling digital copies through online platforms. Today, I have the luxury of being able to buy a physical copy of certain games I care about, whether retail stores keep selling them or not thanks to internet retail of physical games. But knowing that may no longer be the case for future consoles is unsettling. As I mentioned before, the availability of digital copies of games are not forever. Distribution could cease at any moment due to corporate politics, poor sales, or expired intellectual property licenses. Worse still, certain games are becoming available exclusively through livestream subscription services, meaning consumers may no longer own the games they play someday. I don't look forward to a future where I do not own the games I want to play, but I'm not sure where to go from here other than to take initial projections with a grain of salt. Perhaps I'm afraid of change. That might be a topic for another video in another day because this video has to go out at some point. Thank you all for watching, I will see you in the next video, and until then, take care, stay awesome, stay true to yourself, and remember to never give up. Bye everybody!